This video was made possible by Brilliant, a math and science problem solving website that makes learning fun and rewarding. Your locus of control is simply the belief about where control over your life comes from. Do you ever feel like you're not in control of your life? Like you're just a pawn in a game that's being played by someone else? That if it weren't for a bad decision that someone else made, you would be happier, wealthier, and better off? If so, you're not alone. A lot of people feel this way. You have what we can call an external locus of control. A person with an external locus of control believes that their life is largely out of their control and that they are simply at the mercy of other people, luck, or fate. And if you have this type of mindset, I have some bad news for you. This mindset will make you weak. If you want strength, you have to shift your locus of control. People with an internal locus of control believe that they're in control of their lives. They believe that they can make things happen. If you take on an external locus of control, you give up responsibility for the outcomes of your own life and become a victim. And as a victim, you become powerless to change your own fate. But if you take on an internal locus of control, you take responsibility for the outcomes of your life and become a creative agent. And as a creative agent, you become empowered to control your own destiny. A great example of someone with a strong internal locus of control is Alexander Solzhenitsyn. In 1945, after writing a letter criticizing Joseph Stalin, Solzhenitsyn was arrested and spent eight years in Russian prison and labor camps. And after that, he was forced to spend three more years in exile. And amazingly, instead of blaming others for his situation, he took responsibility for it himself. In the Gulag Archipelago, he said that no matter what situation you were in, it was possible to go over your past with a fine tooth comb and determine an error that you made that landed you in your current situation. You can always find the mistake that caused you to suffer. And this is a pretty radical idea. Solzhenitsyn even said as much in his book. This isn't an idea that everyone can accept, but for those who do, they free themselves completely of the victim mindset. They adopt an internal locus of control and they take complete responsibility for the outcomes of their lives. So Solzhenitsyn took complete responsibility for ending up in prison, even when it would have been easy to play the victim and blame the government, the police, the country, the community, or the people. He didn't blame anyone but himself. And what was the result? He wrote, All the writers who wrote about prison, but who did not themselves serve time there, considered it their duty to express sympathy for prisoners and to curse prison. I have served enough time there. I nourished my soul there, and I say without hesitation, bless you, prison, for having been in my life. Because he took total responsibility for the outcomes of his life, he grew in prison. He said he nourished his soul there. He adopted an internal locus of control and took complete responsibility for his life. And as a result, he became empowered. He took what could have been one of the worst situations in his life and made it the best. In prison, he made himself wise. And in 1956, 11 years after imprisonment and exile, he moved to central Russia where he began his writing career. He dedicated his life to communicating the wisdom he had gained in prison. And in the year 1970, he won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Would Solzhenitsyn have been as great of a literary figure if he had an external locus of control? I don't think so. A great literary figure needs insight, and insight comes from knowing yourself. Solzhenitsyn even wrote, Know thyself. There is nothing that so aids and assists the awakening of omniscience within us as insistent thoughts about one's own transgressions, errors, and mistakes. And so if Solzhenitsyn had an external locus of control, he would have never gotten to know himself in prison. He would be too busy blaming others for the outcomes of his life. And as a result, he would never learn the relationship between his actions and their outcomes. And all great writers must know the relationship between actions and their outcomes. That's what we call insight. And without insight, Solzhenitsyn would not have been a great literary figure. So in my estimation, the adoption of an internal locus of control played a significant role in Solzhenitsyn's greatness. But it's up to you to decide. Will you have an internal or an external locus of control?
And since one of the best ways to take control of your life is through constant education, I recommend checking out this week's sponsor, Brilliant. They've recently taken the interactivity on their platform to a whole new level. Check out this example from the recently redesigned Mathematical Fundamentals course. You might remember the Pythagorean theorem from school, like what the formula is. But in this lesson, you're moving around triangles and actually proving that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. It's pretty cool, and there's a lot more where that came from. Brilliant is an amazing tool for learning STEM, built off a very simple yet effective principle. You learn best while solving problems in real time. Brilliant starts you off with simple problems, but they increase in difficulty bit by bit until, before you even realize it, you've learned a fundamental concept in logic, science, math, or computer science. And on top of that, they add new and exclusive content every month. Join a community of over 11 million learners today by going to www.brilliant.org slash freedom and thought, or click the link in the description below and you can sign up for free. As a bonus for those who are ready to push themselves further, the first 200 people will be hooked up with 20% off the annual subscription. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.